Back in the 60s, the man I wrote it for sang it with me. 1958. Imagine you're inside Toronto's Sony Centre, an air of anticipation fills the hall as the band with their instruments gets ready. Suddenly, the lights go out and a spotlight pierces the darkness, focusing on the back of the hall. Then the music springs to life with the opening tune and the well-known lyrics echo through the crowd. Put your head on my shoulder. Born in 1941 in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, Paul Albert Anka today is known far and wide, not just as Paul Anka, but an iconic figure in pop culture. His journey is laced with timeless hits and he redefined musical boundaries. Growing up in Ottawa, young Paul Anka was always drawn to music. A self-taught prodigy, he mastered the piano and guitar during his teenage years, eventually forming the vocal ensemble The Bobby Soxers. In 1957, armed with ambition and a song, Anka traveled to the very heart of music in New York. His original composition, Diana, not only won him a recording contract with ABC Paramount Records, but went on to sell over 20 million copies. This was the dawn of the Anka era, marked by chart toppers like Lonely Boy, Put Your Head on My Shoulder, and Puppy Love. Did you know that a street in Ottawa was named after him? Yes, the very own Paul Anka Drive of Ontario, Canada was named after the star. Also in 1981, the Ottawa City Council named August 26 Paul Anka Day to celebrate his quarter century in show business. While Paul Anka left his legacy in his home city, he also moved to the West Coast like the star he is, and his one-time Los Angeles abode has recently hit the market. This property, located in the area of Thousand Oaks, has all the elements to become a real estate sensation. A top-notch recording studio, a game room with billiards, a completely renovated kitchen, a separate gym, and a stunning infinity pool. This extensively renovated mansion carries a premium price to go with it, asking 10 million dollars. Well, that's expected for a property within the prestigious Sherwood County Club's guarded gates. The community is renowned for its Jack Nicholas designed golf course, bordered by opulent residences and expansive estate. Membership to this elite club with prominent names like Justin Timberlake, Sylvester Stallone, and Tom Selleck reportedly requires an initiation fee of just $300,000. Anka's one time property is located on one of the most expansive privately gated plots in Sherwood, covering almost six continuous acres. A lengthy gated driveway runs between tree-lined rows, leading to the nearly 8,000 square foot mansion, which is discreetly hidden from street view, ensuring privacy. A number of the rooms offer French doors with access to the backyard, and a spacious motor court precedes a four-car garage, providing plenty of space for luxury vehicles, such as Paul Anka's Porsche Panamera and Mercedes Benz G-Wagon. Nestled on a sprawling six-acre lot, this renovated French-inspired villa stands as a testament to luxury and precision. Step inside and every corner tells a story. A spacious foyer with a high ceiling, stone floors, and Juliet balcony. The French-inspired residence has a semi-open layout with stone floors, high ceilings, and statement light fixtures. The pulse of the house has got to be the state-of-the-art recording studio where melodies come to life, the Paul Anko way. Or when it's time to unwind, there's the billiards room with its black mirrors, reflecting elegance in every detail. An artist, or anyone for that matter, needs their fuel, and this elegantly renovated Eden kitchen is a culinary haven with its new appliances and stunning details. There's also an Eden chef's pantry with a large island and windowed breakfast nook. The dining and family rooms have fully collapsible doors offering unobstructed views and seamless access to spacious patios for dining and relaxing poolside. The residence also has several reception rooms, two of which are lined by Anka's collection of gold records. Now, Paul's personal retreat, an orange living room, adorned with accolades speaking volumes of his legendary career. Upstairs, a sanctuary way. There are four ensuite bedrooms plus two additional bathrooms. The main suite is a realm of relaxation complete with a fireplace, a lavish bathroom, an office area, and a dressing room. Outside, you'll also find a fitness buff's dream, a glass wall detached gym, as well as an adjacent bathroom and an outdoor shower. The home's infinity pool offers rejuvenation amidst nature's serenity. There's also tons of space to throw parties and barbecues or just relax with Paul Anka's melodies. The listing, held by Marianne Scott of Beverly and & Company and Team Nikki and & Karen of Compass, is described as the 
epitome of luxury, coupled with the natural beauty of the surrounding lake and majestic Santa Monica Mountains. Paul and his late spouse Anne also once owned a Beverly Hills home. In July 2004, the couple announced they were selling this home located in a secured enclave above Beverly Hills for a price close to $6 million. Their goal was to acquire a more compact residence within LA. Their property in Beverly Hills that they had been possession of for 14 years was five bedrooms, eight baths, and spans 8,000 square feet. This neoclassical villa constructed in 1987 is complemented by breathtaking urban panoramas, a dedicated media space, a screening room, and a library. In a noteworthy twist, the reason they were offering this property was due to a new acquisition in Las Vegas, a city they formerly resided in for a long time. However, Angus Tropicana Avenue abode Vegas is now part of the MGM Grand, which opened in 1993. Paul Anka has always been a legend in the vast expanse of pop culture. We can also see that every home he's inhabited, every note he struck, and every lyric he wrote tells the story of a man who wasn't just born to be in the music industry, but to influence and redefine it. That will wrap up today's house tour, but after wandering through Paul Anka's real estate, answer this question for me. If you had the opportunity to host a grand party at Anka's house, which area would you use as the main event space and what would be the theme of your event? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram at Kara the Vampire Slayer to see more. I'm Kara and I will see you all in another video. Bye! Get ready to see some luxurious properties once we look at the numerous mansions owned by star couple Nicole Kidman and Keith Urban. We need help when we get to town, most of us do. And we just want someone to believe in us. You know, it makes all the difference. So you were easy to believe in, Breland. <laughs> Pair maintains multiple residences scattered worldwide, including a breathtaking farm in Australia, a luxurious mansion in LA, and a penthouse in Manhattan. There was even talk recently that Nicole purchased another lavish property in Portugal. Despite all of those spots, the focal point of Nicole and Keith's lives revolves around their primary family estate situated in Nashville, Tennessee. This impressive property boasts a variety of men such as swimming pool, recording studio, theater, and ample space spanning over 10,000 square feet. Basically, there's plenty of room for Nicole, Keith, and their daughters, Faith and Sunday. Nicole and Keith spend the majority of their time at their family mansion located in Nashville, Tennessee, which they purchased for $3.47 million in 2008. The 10,925 square foot abode offers seven bedrooms and eight baths, so there's more than enough room for Nicole. Nicole, Keith, and their daughters, Faith and Sunday. Their stately and regal home is in an upscale gated community called Northumberland, just outside of Nashville, offering the famed couple top-notch privacy and security. We express that and we have family meetings and in total, there are a whopping 20 rooms spread across three luxurious floors. According to old listing photos from the time of purchase, Nicole's estate was decked out in a classic style with plenty of common spaces, boasting high ceilings as well as elegant details from the curtains to the archways and the marble floors. The couple's living room clocks in at a massive 32 by 21 feet, while the formal dining room is 23 feet long. The main floor is full of French doors and large paned windows, flooding the mansion with natural light. Nearby, there's the kitchen, which is decked out in hardwood floors and expensive appliances. And at the top of the main staircase, there's a loft-like lounge space too. Other rooms in the couple's mansion include a rec room with full bar and pool table area, a hobby room, and a home movie theater. While we haven't been able to see photos of each of the bedrooms, we do know Nicole and Keith's sumptuous master suite has a fireplace and a sprawling spa-style bathroom. Many of the photos of this mansion are well in need of an update and we can even see from aerial and exterior views that the couple has renovated their Nashville palace to fit their taste. Nicole and Keith have shared some personal glimpses into their lovely home though, including the time the award-winning actress revealed she was learning Italian way back during the lockdown. She posted a pic on Instagram showing herself studying on a pale blue and cream striped armchair next to a set of double doors with glass panels looking out to a bell. Keith can also write and record new music from home since he has a studio here, set up with all the speakers, mixing decks, 
and equipment you would see in a professional space. Maybe even better. We even saw one of their cats, Snow, looking out from the windows at this Nashville home in a photo taken in this spacious hallway complete with wooden floors and an antique rug. Outside, beautiful landscaping, a large pool, spa, and full-size tennis court round out Nicole and Keith's stately property. There even appears to be a play area for the kids and a private creek. Nicole and Keith also snagged themselves a stunning penthouse in the ritzy Tribeca area of New York City in 2020. The couple spent $3.5 million on a condo, which spans about 1,600 square feet with two bedrooms and 2.5 baths. So they have a lavish space to stay at when they find themselves on the East Coast. Their penthouse is located inside of the famous Clock Tower building in Manhattan, which previously housed the New York Life Insurance Company. The developers converted the 400,000 square foot building into luxury condos back in 2018. Photos from the building's website show a ton of amenities that residents have access to, including rooftop gardens, an indoor pool, dining areas, a fully stocked gym, and much more. According to reports, one of the features which attracted Nicole and Keith to the building was what's called a sky garage, which allows residents' cars to be lifted to their units via hydraulics. This helps the high profile couple avoid the eyes of the paparazzi. Before we wrap this up, we have to take a look at Nicole and Keith's Australian farmhouse. The actress previously gave Vogue a video tour of her retreat, Banya Hill in Australia, which they bought also in 2008 for around $4.1 million. Long hidden behind hedges and greenery, the Sutton Forest property with its magnificent 1878 Georgian mansion and impressive pedigree has wide sandstone terraces, pressed metal ceilings, a carved cedar staircase, and 10 marble fireplaces throughout. This place has the proportions and amenities that make it worthy enough to be leased as a vice regal rural retreat for Lord Augustus Loftus. This guy was a governor of NSW in the colonial 1880s. Banya Hill was sold by Peter Code, head of global markets at National Australia Bank and his wife. The stunning Georgian mansion that Nicole and Keith now own is a rustic yet elegant farmhouse and sits on a whopping 111 acres of land. Nicole showed off the billiards room on the home tour where she loves to play a game or two and the formal living room has a grand piano as well as one of the many fireplaces. The couple's farm is also home to black Angus cows and orchard and a small guest cottage. When they get tired of the relaxing country air, they can also retreat to the penthouses they own in Sydney. Despite being based in the USA's country music capital, Nashville, Nicole and Keith also claim half a dozen apartments in Harborside Milsons Point in Sydney. Her most recent purchase took her price tag in the one building to over $27.5 million. A three bedroom spread on the 15th floor of the landmark Latitude building was purchased by Nicole in May 2023 for seven $0.725 million, which, like her other apartments here, are held in the name of corporate interests under her childhood friend, Annette Reckner. Prior to this, the couple was already working on making their mark in this building. First, they bought a $6 million penthouse located on the 21st floor before snapping up the penthouse next door for $7 million in 2012. Then, they combined these two into one massive apartment. Meanwhile, a $2.68 million apartment on the 19th floor of the building was bought by Nicole in 2011, which she now reportedly uses as a home office. We have glimpsed inside Nicole and Keith's penthouse bed, but it's kept mostly private. The apartment has a huge wraparound balcony with floor to ceiling glass doors from their spacious living area, which has a formal dining table for the ultimate dinner party setting. This building also provides residents with access to a heated pool, gym, and sauna, as well as a prime location in Sydney, which Nicole showcased with her fans on Instagram. Instagram on New Year's Day. While Nicole and Keith own more properties than these, these are the places where they spend most of their time. So for today, that's gonna wrap up this house tour. But before we go, answer this question for me. If you had homes across the globe, which continent would you choose to spend the most time? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer and I'll see you all in another video. Bye.